Greetings everyone. Welcome back to another episode of The Mex Effects. Today we discuss when the people of Besaid called Titus a heathen. We'll see what it means to be a heathen in the real world and how those meanings are useful to understanding the world of Spira and Final Fantasy X. But first, like and subscribe and share this with someone you think will be interested in how Square Enix used biblical religion and culture to create Final Fantasy X. Also, comment what you think about my explanation. Now, let us begin. Before we actually talk about heathen, I want to set the stage. I want to get to the part I skipped earlier at the bonfire. So, we just got out of the cloister trials, and we meet with Waka to talk about Blitzball. I remember, that night, we talked for the first time. I didn't know it then, but after that night, Everything changed. For everyone. For me. Let me introduce you to the team. This guy here wants into the tournament so bad, I let him on the team. His memory's a little fuzzy, so don't mind him if he says anything odd. Come on, say hi. Uh, hi guys. Hi. So what's our goal? To do our best! <sighs> nope, we got a new goal now. Our new goal is victory! To win every match, defeat every opposing team, to bring the Crystal Cup back to our island. That's all we need to do to win. Easy, huh? Victory! 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 Now I'm not going to breeze through that because I don't want to show anything without giving some biblical knowledge. Everything must be important in some way. What you learn from this scene is how Waka is as a leader. Firstly, you learn that to do our best thing really was their goal because they said it so vigorously that you know it was ingrained into them. This is a failure on Waka's part. He had lost so much hope that his team had lost hope as well. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 2 As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of a city is, of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. In short, whatever way Waka thinks is how his team thinks. This may seem like a small thing, but it becomes more important when we learn about, say, Seymour and Laguana. Now, I said Waka failed in this manner. However, here is where he's done well, actually. Because apparently, he's such a good leader that when he does say the team is going to win, now, everyone believes it. Of course, saying this in a vacuum wouldn't have worked, but Waka presented something new, a new skilled player. And the Aurochs respect Waka's blitzball ability. So if he says, Titus is skilled enough to help them win, Titus must be good. But this only works when presenting a possible change and if the leader himself is skilled. Ecclesiasticus, again, chapter 44, verses 1 through 3 and verse 6. Let us now praise famous men, our fathers that begat us. The Lord hath wrought great glory by them through his great power from the beginning such as did rule in their kingdoms, men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies. Rich men furnished with ability, living peacefully in their habitations. So since Waka is a skilled player, he's respected amongst his people. I think there's scripture where it says, not a novice. But anyway, let us meet Yuna. You heathen! Stay away from the summoner! You're a bad man! Lady Yuna, be careful. But 
It was really my fault to begin with. I'm Yuna. Thank you so much for your help earlier. Huh? Ah, uh, I'm sorry about that. Wasn't that... Wasn't I not supposed to... Guess I kind of overreacted. Oh, no. I was overconfident. Um, I saw that Aeon thing. That's amazing. Uh, really? Do you think I can become High Summoner? Lady Yuna, come play with me some more. So, tomorrow then. Tomorrow? We're going on the same boat, aren't we? Oh, really? We can talk more. Huh. You can tell me all about Xanarkand. She's cute, yeah? Don't get no ideas. No promises there, big guy. Hey, but what if she, like, comes on to me? That's not going to happen. If you get tired, let me know. I had a bed made for you. Okay, so we saw how Yuna greeted us. However, the other people treated us like we were dangerous. Why? Well, let's examine what they said. They called us a heathen. Then they said, you're a bad man. A bad man is what heathen is supposed to mean. Why? Well, first, let's get the history of the words Gentile, heathen, and infidel. The word Gentile means a race or nation, as stated in Genesis chapter 10, verse 5. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their land. Everyone after his tongue, after their families, in their nation. As you can see, Gentiles are divided by families and nations. It is not no surprise then that the root word of Gentile is genus. Genus means birth or family. It also is the root word of generations, gender, genealogy, and genesis. All these mean the birth or beginning of something. And Genesis 10 lists the birth of all nations. That's why it means, or Genesis means, in the beginning. Since this lists all the nations, everyone was considered Gentile at this time. At this time, I said. So, uh, when did it change? Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy, and have severed you from other people, that ye shall be mine. So, in this verse, God says he severed or separated Israel from all other nations. So, Israel are not Gentiles, according to this scripture. Instead of being the generations of man, they are the sons of God, according to Psalms chapter 82, verse 6, and somewhere next to this. Now, the word Gentile applies to everyone else except Israel. And heathen is a word that solidifies that. So being called heathen is like saying, you're not one of us, or you specifically, you're not Israel. But hold on, if heathen means of another race, when did that become an insult? Because you can be of another race and it should be fine, right? So heathen means not of Israel. But we know that the humans represent Israel because we saw them in Xanarkin, which is supposed to represent Israel. So why are they calling Titus a heathen? Well, first, let's examine if we can find a heathen, any heathen, in the game. That's enough!
Uh, what's with that guy? Kimari Ronso, of the Ronso tribe. He's learned the fiend's way of fighting. That's not what I meant. He's another Yuna's guardian. Huh? <laughs> Sometimes we don't understand him either. Kamari doesn't talk much anyway. Mm. But he has protected me since I was a child. Hmm. So we see that there are people of different races here. This is not a human at all. So we can guess that instead of dividing races by country, like in the real world, Final Fantasy X divided them by species. And if Kamari is another race, isn't he heathen? Why is he all right to be saved, but we're not? Well, let's examine one more trait of a heathen. Second Ezra chapter three, verses 34 through 36. Weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in a balance, and there's also that dwell in the world. And so shall thy name nowhere be found but in Israel. Or when was it that they which dwell upon the earth have not sinned in thy sight? Or what people have so kept thy commandments? Thou shalt find that Israel by name hath kept thy precepts, but not the heathen. In short, the heathen never kept God's words. They never believed in God. And that is where the word infidel comes in, because fidel means faithful. Infidel means unfaithful. That's not only means that you don't believe in God, it also means that I cannot trust you. After all, if you don't believe in the commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery, I may find you sleeping with someone else. That is why we call sleeping with someone who is not your spouse infidelity because you showed yourself to be a liar and broke your vows. You cannot be trusted. Gentiles and heathen are infidel by default because they don't keep these commandments. They don't have the same laws to govern their actions. Psalm chapter 147, verses 19 and 20. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. That is why Abraham and Isaac did not reveal the whole truth about their wives being wives, because surely there is no fear of God in this country. They may break the commandment that says thou shalt not kill, and the commandment says thou shalt not covet, in trying to kill me to take my wife. You see, for Gentiles, what's right and wrong is largely dependent on what each individual person believes and what their circumstances are at that time. But for an Israelite, the standard of morality for the entire race is permanently documented in the Bible. The precepts must be obeyed, not your emotions. But a person from Israel who disobeys those laws is deliberately evil because he had a definite standard and chose not to follow it. Actually, you know what? I like the image that Kimari looks like a lion. Why? Does a lion have the same laws as a human? No. But are there conditions where he will not kill you? Yes, keep him fed and he's happy. But what about a human who prowls like a roaring lion? You cannot trust him. He's actively seeking to hurt you. It's the same thing. That's why Bisaid has Kimari, a naturally born heathen, around, but ostracizes me, who they call a heathen. They see me as deliberately being animalistic. Now, I need to make this clear. Gentile, heathen, and infidel do not mean not one of the major faiths. That is a lie. Because Buddhism is a major faith for all of Asia, but it is not included in the list. These words mean from a race that is not Israel or someone who is from Israel who breaks the commandments in committing idolatry. That's why I have to look in a dictionary under synonyms and find idolatry. This is it. Now that we've done that, in the New Testament, we hear the word, we don't hear the word Israel often. We hear the word Jew. That is important because these besaved people call me a heathen. So they think they are keeping the laws. The people taught by the Pharisees, the Jews, thought they were keeping the laws and wouldn't meet with people who were heathens. Acts chapter 10 verse 28. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. 
But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So that means the humans of Besaid are not just Israel, specifically they are Jews. They are the tribes Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Now I know you want me to explain this verse more, and you want me to explain the difference between a Jew and Israel more, but first I need to get off this island. Next time on the Mex Effects.